They began as a rap group. That's what America wants to hear. Sex, violence, and drugs, man. Their lyrics carried messages of murder and mayhem. What you want do? I got my top loaded and it's pointing straight at you, huh? They transformed into one of Florida's most violent Haitian gangs. They don't play. The Haitians don't play. Hundreds strong, their firepower has outgunned police. It was literally the Wild West. Gunshots every day, gunshots every night. They're known as Top Six. Top Six, baby. In their world, an eye for an eye is the rule. It's a back and forth thing, it ain't gonna never stop till everybody die. It's the life. You know, it's either you get him first or he gets you. Florida, a lush seaside community in the shadows of Miami, where supersized mansions and upscale boutiques are shaded by majestic royal palms. It's the city of the rich, so they say, but everybody on the other side of the island of Palm Beach is trying to get rich. Less than two miles from this tropical paradise is West Palm Beach, a city isolated from that impenetrable wall of wealth. It's a bridge, actually, that go up. They really don't want us that they'll just put up the bridge. With nearly 100,000 residents and an estimated 160 gangs, West Palm Beach is a dangerous killing zone. We in the hood, man. Y'all downtown West Norm. We call it West Norm, man, because all the gunplay that be going on around here. You know what I'm saying? Anybody can get it at any time. The violence plaguing this small community is a product of proximity. A mere 70 miles south lies the Port of Miami, the one-time nerve center of Scarface Nation. At the height of Miami's drug war, 85% of the nation's cocaine was smuggled into the country through this major U.S. city. Palm Beach County is one of the first stops north on the notorious I-95 highway a lucrative drug corridor. Where there's money and drugs, there's guns. Where you get those three things together, there's always violence. One of Palm Beach County's most dangerous criminal outfits is a hardcore street gang known as Top Six. It's Top Six, my <laughs> represent. Damn, dog. Oh, you know how we do. <laughs> Whose Haitian roots give them a deadly swagger. Ain't no mess with them Haitian boys, man. You better watch out, boy. Boy, them boys deep. Yeah, they have no fear. I don't know if that's from the Haitian mentality. They have no, no fear of the police, no fear of dying. It's really about where they come from. They don't really take no bull Top six are 21st century gangsters, billing themselves as a rap group and record label. A soldier died thumping in the battlefield. The gang says it's influenced by artists like 50 Cent and Master P. Their music's message and their fan base are deeply rooted in Haitian pride. But according to law enforcement, top six are secretly composers of crime. Their lyrics, coded messages of terror. I dispose of your body, we leave it floating. Your mama crying and hoping. Bad news, they find you in the ocean with nine bullet wounds. They want to have a cover. It's always a cover. But when you peel back the layers of the onion, you find that what you have at the core of it is corruption. The cover and codes devised by Top Six have proved difficult for law enforcement to crack. That's why it's been so hard to combat them, because nobody admits to, to their membership where the Bloods and the Crips are proud of who they are. Still, there are clues hidden deep within the gang songs. Local cops have discovered Top Six isn't just one gang, but an organized crime family made up of more than a dozen different Haitian cliques. 
in their music, you will hear them call out their allies. You know that these are all part of the alliance. Together, they are a force to be reckoned with. 400 strong, moving throughout South Florida. You know, who wouldn't want to be a part of something that was big? You know what I mean? They're rapping, doing their thing. You got the young kids, you know, claiming top six. Yeah, top six, we top six, we hanging out with top six. 26-year-old Ghost joined the top six alliance in high school, clicking up with a subset of the gang called the Down South Boys. as just, you know, just people being young, having fun. Though Ghost was born in the U.S., his mother was an immigrant, one of more than 55,000 boat people who fled Haiti in the 1970s. As a result, Ghost's African-American peers looked down on him. America was portraying Haiti as being a poor country, salvaged people, people that just into voodoo, magic, and stuff like that. His dark skin typecast him in other ways. When he was 16, Ghost was walking home from an after-school job. He was arrested for a crime he didn't commit. Somebody had got beat up for his money, hit over the head with a hammer. I came walking down the street. I was black. I fit the description. Got locked up for it, went to trial, got proven that it wasn't me, and I was let go. Then that's when street life really started. Ghost dropped out of school in the 10th grade. He turned to the streets and to top six. If something's going down with one of us, we're not gonna just, gonna just sit there and let it happen. We all gonna have each other back and help each other through. You know, they was fighting so much for their respect. Ghost wasn't the only one drawn by the gang's message of Haitian unity. 25-year-old Darius Martin, AKA Deadly, is a rapper who credits Top Six with his success. He did my video, you know what I'm saying? He did a lot of other music, business stuff with me. So I represent for him, you know what I'm saying, in an entertainment way. Deadly is glad to be on the right side of Top Six. Those who aren't pay the price. It's like. You being on the wrong block, you get your ass whacked. Or you just being on the wrong street, or you walking while these riding four deep in the car. It just happened to be the other day. Top Six relies on a group of enforcers to protect its turf, a six square mile community within West Palm Beach known as Lake Worth. The Lake Worth, baby. If anyone tries to infringe on their territory, they shoot to kill. There's really no such thing about like a second chance. Or if, if you have a problem with somebody and you see them right there, man, it's either you do them right now or you lose the opportunity of ever catching them again. If their goal was to kill you and they missed, they were going to come back. And it wasn't, I'm gonna come up and I'm gonna shoot at you with a 22. I'm gonna come and I'm gonna bring some of my friends. We're gonna light you up. In Lake Worth, even the most notorious gangs fear the brutality of this homegrown terror. We talked to Latin King gang members. We spoke to Blood and Crip gang members, gangster disciples. We spoke to them, we talked about top sex. And like, those boys are crazy. Poppy's kind of top their powerful arsenal and trigger-happy reputation has even made some cops reluctant to work the gang unit. We'd be at one shooting scene, and you could hear shots being fired at another location in the city while we were already out there. Yeah, what you want? Again, what you want? Assault rifles, handguns. It's all out here. AK-47, SKs, 223s, M16s, 9mm, Desert Eagles, Glocks, 4.5s, 
38s, 22s, 32s, what you want? Extensions? All that 100 round drums, 100 round clips, all that is out here. It's out here. And Top Six isn't afraid to use any of it. At their height, the gang had racked up 150 shootings and had 14 homicides to their name. But one brazen crime would push authorities to a breaking point and set off a war to take down the gang. September 2006. Sherwood Joseph and three other top six members were cruising the streets looking for trouble. They found it in the parking lot of a Super 8 motel just outside of Lake Worth. A car carrying another local clique called the 14th Boys pulled into the parking lot. Inside the car, Colby and Markel Jackson, hated enemies of top six, were preparing for a routine drug deal to go down. The Jackson brothers were unaware that their top six rivals had spotted them and that they were driving straight into a trap. There was only one way into the parking lot, and it was the same way out. Once they got them in there, they blocked them in and basically got out of the car and opened fire. It's like a scene you would see in the movies. 76 rounds from an AK-47 to fire. 76 rounds. Magazine holds 30. So was it more than one gun? So multiple shooters with AK-47s getting out? It's incredible. Colby Jackson was killed instantly. His brother Markel somehow escaped the hail of gunfire. The motel rooms were shot. Uh, it's a miracle nobody else was hit. Sherwood Joseph and his top six triggermen quickly fled the scene. But moments later, they circled back to finish the job. Surveillance cameras caught a glimpse of their second assault. As smoke billowed from machine gun blasts, Markel Jackson scrambled to safety. The gunmen walk over to uh, one of the individuals and shoot him while he's down on the sidewalk. Markel Jackson somehow survived, but the merciless shootings shocked Lake Worth authorities. All bets were off between Top Six and the 14th Boys, and blood was about to run in the streets. I think this was the last straw. Once this happens, we knew that everything was gonna break loose. West Palm Beach, Florida. Separated by the intercoastal waterway from its rich neighbors in Palm Beach, it's called the other side of the island. A city plagued with pockets of poverty and the deadly gunplay of a homegrown Haitian gang known as Top Six. Just like a Vietnam vet that done been over there and done been through all that gunplay. You know what I mean? We've been through the same gunplay just in the urban area. We weren't in the jungle, but we call it a concrete jungle. The gang started in 1999 with six aspiring Haitian rap artists at Lake Worth High School. When Ghost was 17, he met the rappers in an ESOL class, English for speakers of other languages. Majority of people, they didn't really speak like good English, and this is where you'll come and you know, practice on your English and sharpen up. Yet there was no communication gap when it came to rap music. The Haitians spent countless hours practicing after school. Some decided to call themselves Top Six for one simple reason. There was only six of them. So they just went with the top and the number represented how many people was in the group at the time. But Top Six wasn't the only Haitian gang to form at Lake Worth High School. Other crews vied for dominance in the hallways and on the street. At first it was, it was just for fun and games, then after a while it became serious. It became a way of life. 
you would have one click rolling around Lake Worth. If they saw one lone member of the other click on the street, they would basically jump out, beat him up, strip him of his clothes, and leave him naked in the street. And that was kind of like the little game they played with each other. But the top six, it was child's play. They lusted for the big time. And to get there, they needed just one thing, money. In the late 90s, thousands of illegal immigrants from Cuba and Haiti worked in West Palm Beach as day laborers, trying to cash in on the American dream. Most of them don't have a green card where they could get a bank account and put their money in the bank, so they usually carry their whole paycheck with them. To top six, they were simply walking ATMs. It's literally like, you know, sharks following a school of fish, and they go after them. But the gang's need for green didn't stop there. West Palm Beach had long been a hot spot for drugs channeled up from Miami. Though law enforcement had cleaned out most of the dope dealers decades earlier, it was now a wide open market, and Top Six stepped in to fill the void. They were connected to people who were moving uh, multi-kilos. They were the vehicle or the tool for these major drug trafficking organizations to get the product on the street. The gang's supply was funneled in by their Miami-based brothers, a violent Haitian gang known as Zopound. As Top Six's drug empire grew, so did their numbers. By 2001, they had an estimated 200 members and even more fans. They being heard and people were like liking them more and coming and flocking to them more. At the same time, they are actually you know, moving keys. So that's another reason to really get to know them. With money and music as the lure, Top Six was becoming a de facto role model for Haitians in West Palm Beach. Every Haitian crew now pledged allegiance to the gang. If you're a Haitian, you know what I'm saying, that's, that's what you wanted to be. Some people broke off and did their own things, but you wanted to be a, in the top six rap group, you know what I'm saying? They was fighting at every club that they went to and screaming out top six. They was making a name for themselves. Hey, listen here, man. This is your boy, Mr. Freak. Five, six. Jimmy Pettidu, known on the streets as Mr. Freak, saw the group's potential. Top six all day. And crackers don't like it? F them crackers. Top six all day, Mr. Free Production. Top six all day. The half brother of one of the original members, Mr. Freak produced the gang's first music video as part of a college project. In 2003, Top Six released their first album, titled Tearing Up the House. It was an eerie premonition of what was to come. Everybody was just showing it off, showing it off. And I was like, wow, to do an album, come out in plastic? I mean, for me growing up, and that was my dream to do one of those, that was the biggest thing. Nine, six, straight, right, chill out with your dog, Ray Low. The group's fame soared when they were broadcast on a pirate radio show run by local disc jockey Ray Hartley, AKA Ray Low. Yeah, what's up? They were the biggest thing. They were the only thing representing for the Haitians at that time. There was people that probably weren't even Haitian claiming top six. Everybody was just jumping on the bandwagon, trying to come up off the little top six fame and run with it. But top six didn't want to be just studio gangsters. As their music careers took off, so did their criminal empire. Either you're rapping about what you're really living or you're fake. If you're not living that life, then you ain't supposed to be rapping about it. You're just a studio guest and you're fake. So they want to be real. Their gangbanging was real. But by 2004, their kingdom began to show some cracks. The gang's message of Haitian solidarity 
touted in their lyrics was being lost on newer members of the Top Six family who were seeking their own share of the spotlight. And it's like, when you're doing things, you might be in the way of somebody else shining, so they would probably take you out the picture so they could shine. Ghost and the Down South Boys gang felt disrespected by Top Six and vowed to set them straight one night at a Lake Worth club. Things happened in the parking lot. The fight happened. Three of Top Six members got stabbed. Ghost claims his homeboys let him take the fall. He was sentenced to four years in prison for attempted murder. And after that incident happened, they went around rapping, I'm like 50 cents, I got stabbed, I didn't die. That kind of like boosted their head and made them feel like probably invincible or they just cheated death. 50 Cent was a huge influence upon the young Haitian guys who had been shot in a drive-by sold drugs, been arrested for selling drugs, sings about selling drugs. They looked at him as a guy who was one of them. It was a defining moment that turned Top Six into a criminal syndicate, hell-bent on the belief that violence could take them to the top of the charts. If you mess with one of them, you mess with all of them. That's real. The Haitians armed themselves with assault rifles and automatic handguns and went after whoever challenged their rise to power. You just see just the most craziest stuff, but you know, you got to blink twice and ask yourself, did I just see that? You ever see people, you know, swerving on you, come shoot out the car, pop, pop. Whatever, you know, just, you know, people getting chopped up, you know, chopped up mean. We were getting called out two, three, four times a week because of a shooting that was related to these guys. A week. The brutal violence was reflected in the lyrics of their songs, like Payback. I ain't no stranger to y'all. I got a hundred round clip that make all y'all fall. And that's right. Y'all boys asking for problems, but I guarantee you that SK gon' solve Payback, Payback. When you put a message out and you say, you did us wrong, and we're coming to get you. And then you go do it. That song takes on a whole new meaning. It's more than just singing a song. You know, you can say that all day long, but when you actually going out and actually killing people, then you're living your music. It was as if every song spawned another shooting. On Christmas Eve 2006, the bloodshed escalated to a new level. In a brazen attack in broad daylight, a top six member opened fire inside the Boynton Beach Mall. The gunman unloaded six shots at close range, killing a rival gang member. Now, you're talking about 2.30 in the afternoon, Christmas Eve, in a crowded mall. Now, 30 yards away from the kids' playground area. Police responding to the scene were caught in the hail of gunfire. Some of our officers hear the shots fired. They go towards the scene. He actually fires rounds through all our officers and we end up chasing them through the mall. Once that happened, People stepped up and said, wow, this could happen anywhere. It's no longer in the city of Lake Worth on one street that we're not, we don't care about because we don't live there. Now it affected everybody. I mean, they shut down an entire mall on Christmas Eve. Top six was out of control, and Palm Beach County was paying the price. It was, you know, live for the moment, take care of each other, and F everybody else. West Palm Beach, nestled in the heart of Florida's Gold Coast, it is ranked number 13 among America's most dangerous cities. A dark world of lawlessness run by a Haitian gang called Top Six. Let me get my six. Six again. You look at the national gangs, they have a Bible. They have something to go by. There's almost rules. There was no rules in Top Six. It was free for all. There were no rules. In top six, 
There's no hierarchy or structure. The only way to get to the top is through bloodshed. With top six, it was more secular. It was sort of power, in a sense, rotated. The guys with the money, the more violent guys, got more prestige and became more powerful. Though some top six members boast solid black or white t-shirts, others insist the gang doesn't have official colors. Where we from, too many ain't got nothing, man. Them little $5 t-shirts do good. You feel me? You go to the store and buy a white t-shirt, you looking like a million dollars, you know what I'm saying? It ain't no gang because we ain't repping no flags. We ain't throwing up no red flags, no blue flags, no green flags. We ain't repping no flags. We repping us as black people. Top six members do represent with t-shirts emblazoned with the letters R.I.P. It's just like when somebody dies, you know, in remembrance of that person, you'll put their face on a t-shirt, you know, go to the funeral like that, or when the anniversary, or whatever you feel like you're missing your homeboy, you know. Some members are also marked with simple tattoos that read top six. Or claim the city of Lake Worth. But there's one way almost all top six members can be identified. By their battle scars. Many of them are excited when they get shot. They actually thrive on that. Many of them are, are happy to show their scars. Their hand sign also represents the number six. All five fingers on one hand and the middle finger on the other. They also throw up the middle fingers on both hands, symbolizing their motto, FTW. Unlike many street gangs, Top Six finds it unnecessary to tag its turf. Their reputation is so strong on the street as far as being uh, extremely violent. Uh, basically having any type of hesitation to shoot you that they didn't have to mark territory. Graffiti is like the newspaper of the street. Well, the, the newspaper of the street for Top Six members is the music. You know, that's how they get the message out. According to authorities, Top Six uses its CDs as recruitment tools and often gives away copies for free. The gang recruits members from the same place it formed, high school. Membership requires little more than loyalty. Pretty much, there's no jump in. There's basically guys who are respected for being able to handle their business on the street, guys who are loyal, who back them up in the club. Anyone who joins Top Six gains instant recognition. You really want to get close to the people who have connections because it's all about coming up, being a made man. You have to like know the right people who have connections so you can get their connections so you could like making the kind of money that they making. Once inside the gang, there are three ways to prove oneself. Distributing drugs, making music. Call me the hit man because I was seeking destruction. Pulling the trigger. It's either do or die, they live in, you know what I'm saying, in the streets. That same philosophy applies to the gang's most important rule, the G-Code. They don't talk. You go to any gang-related shooting, there could be in broad daylight, in the middle of summer, where 20 or 30 people are standing outside, their houses are around that area, it happened, and nobody would talk to you. Palm Beach authorities once offered a plea deal to a top six member who drove the getaway car used in a homicide. He refused, choosing jail over snitching. We weren't interested in putting him away for life. We, we needed his cooperation to get the actual shooters, and he chose to take a life sentence rather than a 10-year sentence and speak to the police. Police attribute the gang's silence to their Haitian heritage and their strong sense of loyalty. Me and my brother's keeper, he's my keeper. Stick to the G-code and everything will be okay. Especially if it ain't got to do with you, leave it alone, cause you stepping in some that you can't wipe off your foot. 
Their silence makes them a hot commodity among Mexican drug traffickers. These organizations see the value of a group like Top Six because it can get the product out on the streets and it can control what's going on on, on the streets. Top Six deals primarily out of traps. They rely on motel managers to serve as lookouts and help secure transactions. You're serving in front of a motel, so you're paying them, you know, for like a little leeway. So when things go down, they won't be so mad at you because because you was paying, you was like taking care of them. Most important, Top Six depends on guns. Their weapon of choice. Choppers, choppers, and more choppers. person holding a gun in their hand just gives them the sense of that, you know, like they could play God. You know, they could judge if a person should live or die. Most of their guns are acquired through home robberies and car thefts. Top Six has even been brazen enough to steal from police vehicles. They are also active at gun shows where they make straw purchases. Very often what will happen is a citizen, upstanding citizen with no criminal record, will go and buy weapons, whether they be handguns or military assault style weapons, and then essentially sell it to a gang member who will pay top dollar for it. With rivals on every corner, firepower is a means of survival. You out there doing what you're doing, you got to be on your because a bitch catch you slipping, they're going to bust your head and bust whoever head with you. And that's how it go down. For top six, death can come at any time for any reason. Fighting over females, fighting over money, fighting over territories, fighting because of he say, she say. Just small, petty stuff. That is crazy, man. We ain't know what was going to happen. March 27, 2007, Lake Worth, Florida. Six months earlier, top six members Sherwood Joseph and three of his cronies pumped 76 rounds off an AK-47 into a car parked at a Super 8 motel. Colby Jackson, a hated rival of top six, was killed instantly. Now, the victim's gang, the 14th boys, sought to settle the score with more blood. <laughs> Nearly a dozen top six members were playing dominoes and cards in the backyard of a house in the heart of their territory. This was like the top six safe house. Nobody dared to come into this house and disrespect top six. Out of nowhere, three masked gunmen, believed to be 14th boys, stormed the backyard and opened fire with automatic weapons. They come up through the driveway and they just start popping rounds at anything that was moving. And smoke billowing from the backyard from all the gunfire. The gunmen unloaded 40 rounds before the only armed top six member managed to fire back hitting one of the shooters. That kind of throws a whole monkey wrench. One of the other guy's rifles gets jammed, and they decide, oh, okay, let's retreat. Three men were killed, including Edison Marcel, one of the original members of Top Six. Four others were injured. You know, your, your home is where it's supposed to be exclusive. Nobody's supposed to know about it, because if you have beef, then they're going to bring it to your home. And the person knew where they stayed at. It was one of the deadliest, most gruesome crimes in the history of Palm Beach County. Police knew an unprecedented gang war was about to erupt, unless they acted quickly. Top Six was going to go out and, and shoot whoever was responsible for this, and it didn't matter where it was.
In the span of two and a half years, authorities had already worked nearly 150 shootings and 14 homicides. They had no choice but to dismantle top six by any means necessary. It's like cutting cancer out. It's a cancer. You don't want to just get a little piece of it. You want to take the whole thing. To take down the gang, authorities knew they would have to topple the entire criminal enterprise. Yet the lack of structure within top six would prove a major challenge. It makes it more difficult to address because you can't just take out one leader and the group will fold. Every time you take out one key guy, somebody is going to fill that vacuum. There's no one set leader. All right, you ready? To carry out the mission, the Sheriff's Office joined forces with 12 other agencies, including the FBI, the ATF, and the U.S. Marshals. Under the RICO Act, they mounted an organized crime case against Top Six, tying the gang to 92 crimes dating back to 2002. You know, you have members who done did some serious crimes and who had some serious charges. So by putting everything together and just doing the RICO Act, that's the uh, best way to, to take them down. It's like a guilty by association. If we can't stick you with this, then we gonna stick you together as a group. Top six, baby. F around, leg worth, nigga. We got that go through vents. The RICO indictment challenged top six on their number one rule, the G code. And once you can get a group of gang members to snitch on each other and violate their number one rule, the gang will implode, and then you'll be able to dismantle that gang so that it no longer exists. If they are not going to cooperate with law enforcement and snitch, then we have no choice but to take them to trial and to seek the maximum sentence. This is the most important thing in the hood, man. People, please stop telling. In June 2008, law enforcement decapitated the top tier of top six. Twelve alleged leaders were arrested on numerous charges, including attempted murder, robbery, and cocaine distribution. It was only the second time the RICO statute was used on street gang members in Palm Beach County, and it took the streets by surprise. I know the that they're doing, it, it bring in the feds and make the feds hit you with the RICO. With all this gang Come on, man, if I had money like they say we had money, we'd be living better than what we living. Cause I don't know nobody that got millions of dollars and still walk around like he broke. In the end, prosecutors hope to introduce as evidence a crucial ingredient that propelled Top Six's rise to power. It's music. Music is a tool that gangs use to promote their criminal activity. It lets them show the strength they have in the community by talking about things that they do to terrorize the community. But their strategy would only work if gang members were willing to go against their unbreakable code of silence. In June 2008, the feds brought a RICO case against the leaders of Top Six. A hardcore Haitian gang who ran the streets of West Palm Beach using reckless firepower. As of June 2009, the trial is ongoing and only two of the 12 key defendants have been convicted. Both refused to break the gang's strict G code and rat on their brothers. They were sentenced to 25 years. I don't see that unity breaking. I just see that unity getting stronger. They tell you the truth. Gang-related homicides in Palm Beach County have dropped more than 25%, from 44 in 2007 to 34 in 2008. Since the 2007 murder of Top Six original member Edison Marcel, and the sweeping RICO indictments that followed, the gang has unraveled into disarray. Today, Top Six has splintered into at least four new groups, 
and a younger generation is taking the reins, still pledging allegiance to top six, but under new identities. It's top six. It's not a good thing to be claiming top six right now because of racketeering and all these things. So, hey, we'll call ourselves uh, Fate Squad now, or we'll call ourselves this, or we'll call ourselves that. One group is so bold, they introduced themselves to authorities. They came in on their own just to tell us, we're not a gang, we are a rap group, this is what we're about. And as we're sitting there and we're talking to them, I'm thinking the whole time, this is 1999, top six, the very beginning. I told them, don't be top set. We'll see. But they're on our radar, we know who they are. Today, old school top six members like Ghost have had enough of gang life. The street life is not something that you really want to stay into for a very long time. It's something that you get into for a minute, make your money, and get out. If you end up staying there, then either you're going to prison or you're going to be six feet deep. After spending four years in prison, Ghost is now struggling to find a job with attempted murder on his resume. He hopes one day to leave Palm Beach behind. I don't want my kids going through the same thing that I went through. I really want a better life from them. Man, I'm getting wealthy. Plus, I'm the one that Do you smell me? Deadly is still chasing his dream of being the next big name in rap. He funds his music through his work as a promoter and performer and spends his free time cutting demos in an underground studio. It's the outlet, you know. It's how I get away, hoping, you know, one day, get that record deal, and I'm out of here. <laughs> I'm always come back to the hood, you know. Love the hood, you know, but the whole thing is to get out the hood, you know. Why you worry about this flies around me, I'm the at the same time, he admits that the RICO case against Top Six has left him reluctant to fully express himself in his lyrics. You can't even rap what you really want to say because you're scared of what you say going to get you indicted or something. We doing this rap, man, and we hoping that that get us where we need to be because the other that we was doing at that thug life, in the streets, I mean, it gets you halfway where you want to be, but as soon as you feel like you're where you want to be, you get f***ed up. And this come bust your head or the people come get you. And, man, that's what it is. So I'm hoping the bitch don't bust my head, and I'm definitely hoping that the people don't come get me. Authorities say their greatest concern is that the violence on the streets will continue to drive the music. The song is reflective of the culture, always has been. And you can take that all the way back from rhythm and blues to rock and roll, soul, up to, to hip hop. I don't know that it's anything more than a memorialization of what's happening in our neighborhoods. For those living on the front lines like Deadly, violence and music have always gone hand in hand. America used to go to war with different countries. What they used to have? Drums. They was going trrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
they transformed into one of Florida's most violent Haitian gangs. They don't play. The Haitians don't play. Hundreds strong, their firepower has outgunned police. It was literally the Wild West. Gunshots every day, gunshots every night. They're known as Top Six. Top Six, baby. In their world, an eye for an eye is the rule. It's a back and forth thing, it ain't gonna never stop till everybody die. It's the life. You know, it's either you get him first or he gets you. Florida, a lush seaside community in the shadows of Miami, where supersized mansions and upscale boutiques are shaded by majestic royal palms. It's the city of the rich, so they say, but everybody on the other side of the island of Palm Beach is trying to get rich. Less than two miles from this tropical paradise is West Palm Beach, a city isolated from that impenetrable wall of wealth. It's a bridge, actually, that go up. They really don't want us that they'll just put up the bridge. With nearly 100,000 residents and an estimated 160 gangs, West Palm Beach is a dangerous killing zone. We in the hood, man. Y'all downtown West Norm. We call it West Norm, man, because all the gunplay that be going on around here. You know what I'm saying? Anybody can get it at any time. The violence plaguing this small community is a product of proximity. A mere 70 miles south lies the Port of Miami, the one-time nerve center of Scarface Nation. At the height of Miami's drug war, 85% of the nation's cocaine was smuggled into the country through this major U.S. city. Palm Beach County is one of the first stops north on the notorious I-95 highway a lucrative drug corridor. Where there's money and drugs, there's guns. Where you get those three things together, there's always violence. One of Palm Beach County's most dangerous criminal outfits is a hardcore street gang known as Top Six. It's Top Six, my <laughs> represent. Damn, dog. Oh, you know how we do it. Whose Haitian roots give them a deadly swagger. Ain't no mess with them Haitian boys, man. You better watch out, boy. Boy, them boys deep. Yeah, they have no fear. I don't know if that's from the Haitian mentality. They have no, no fear of the police, no fear of dying. It's really about where they come from. They don't really take no bull Top six are 21st century gangsters, billing themselves as a rap group and record label. The soldier died thumping in the battlefield. The gang says it's influenced by artists like 50 Cent and Master P. Their music's message and their fan base are deeply rooted in Haitian pride. But according to law enforcement, top six are secretly composers of crime. Their lyrics, coded messages of terror. I dispose of your body, we even floating. Your mama crying and hoping. Bad news, they find you in the ocean with nine bullet wounds. They want to have a cover. It's always a cover. But when you peel back the layers of the onion, you find that what you have at the core of it uh, is corruption. The cover and codes devised by Top Six have proved difficult for law enforcement to crack. That's why it's been so hard to combat them, because nobody admits to, to their membership where the Bloods and the Crips are proud of who they are. Still, there are clues hidden deep within the gang songs. Local cops have discovered Top Six isn't just one gang, but an organized crime family made up of more than a dozen different Haitian cliques. In their music, you will hear them call out their allies. They were Top Six, G-Block, You know that these are all part of the Alliance. Together, they are a force to be reckoned with. 
400 strong, moving throughout South Florida. You know, who wouldn't want to be a part of something that was big? You know what I mean? They're rapping, doing their thing. You got the young kids, you know, claiming top six. Yeah, top six, we top six, we hanging out with top six. 26-year-old Ghost joined the Top Six Alliance in high school, clicking up with a subset of the gang called the Down South Boys. It started out as just, you know, just people being young, having fun. Though Ghost was born in the US, his mother was an immigrant one of more than 55,000 boat people who fled Haiti in the 1970s. As a result, Ghost's African-American peers looked down on him. America was portraying Haiti as being a poor country, salvaged people, people that just into voodoo, magic, and stuff like that. His dark skin typecast him in other ways. When he was 16, Ghost was walking home from an after-school job. He was arrested for a crime he didn't commit. Somebody had got beat up for his money, hit over the head with a hammer. I came walking down the street. I was black. I fit the description. Got locked up for it, went to trial, got proven that it wasn't me, then I was let go. Then that's when the street life really started. Ghost dropped out of school in the 10th grade. He turned to the streets and to top six. If something's going down with one of us, we're not gonna just, gonna just sit there and let it happen. We all gonna have each other back and help each other through. You know, they was fighting so much for their respect. Ghost wasn't the only one drawn by the gang's message of Haitian unity. 25-year-old Darius Martin, AKA Deadly, is a rapper who credits Top Six with his success. They did my video, you know what I'm saying? They did a lot of other music, business stuff with me. So I represent for them, you know what I'm saying, in an entertainment way. Deadly is glad to be on the right side of Top Six. Those who aren't pay the price. It's like, you being on the wrong block, you get your ass whacked. Or you just being on the wrong street, or you walking while these riding four deep in the car. It just happened to be the other day. Top Six relies on a group of enforcers to protect its turf, a six square mile community within West Palm Beach, known as Lake Worth. The Lake Worth, baby. If anyone tries to infringe on their territory, they shoot to kill. There's really no such thing about like a second chance. Or if, if you have a problem with somebody and you see them right there, man, it's either you do them right now or you lose the opportunity of ever catching them again. If their goal was to kill you and they missed, they were going to come back. And it wasn't, I'm gonna come up and I'm gonna shoot at you with a 22. I'm gonna come, I'm gonna bring some of my friends. We're gonna light you up. In Lake Worth, even the most notorious gangs fear the brutality of this homegrown terror. We talked to Latin King gang members. We spoke to Blood and Crip gang members, gangster disciples. We spoke to them, we talked about top sex. And like, those boys are crazy. Their powerful arsenal and trigger-happy reputation has even made some cops reluctant to work the gang unit. We'd be at one shooting scene, and you could hear shots being fired at another location in the city while we were already out there. What you want? Again, what you want? Assault rifles, handguns. It's all out here. AK-47, SKs, 223s, M16s, 9mm, Desert Eagles, Glocks, 4.5s, 38s, 22s, 32s. What you want? Extensions? All that 100-round drums, 100-round clips. All that is out here. It's out here. And Top 6 isn't afraid to use any of it. At their height, the gang had racked up 150 shootings and had 14 homicides to their name. 
But one brazen crime would push authorities to a breaking point and set off a war to take down the gang. September 2006. Sherwood Joseph and three other top six members were cruising the streets looking for trouble. They found it in the parking lot of a Super 8 motel just outside of Lake Worth. A car carrying another local clique called the 14th Boys pulled into the parking lot. Inside the car, Colby and Markel Jackson, hated enemies of top six, were preparing for a routine drug deal to go down. The Jackson brothers were unaware that their top six rivals had spotted them and that they were driving straight into a trap. There was only one way into the parking lot, and it was the same way out. Once they got them in there, they blocked them in and basically got out of the car and opened fire. It's like a scene you would see in the movies. 76 rounds from an AK-47 to fire. 76 rounds. Magazine holds 30. So was it more than one gun? So multiple shooters with AK-47s getting out? It's incredible. Colby Jackson was killed instantly. His brother Markel somehow escaped the hail of gunfire. Motel rooms were shot. Uh, it's a miracle nobody else was hit. Sherwood Joseph and his top six triggermen quickly fled the scene. But moments later, they circled back to finish the job. Surveillance cameras caught a glimpse of their second assault. As smoke billowed from machine gun blasts, Markel Jackson scrambled to safety. The gunmen walk over to uh, one of the individuals and shoot him while he's down on the sidewalk. Markel Jackson somehow survived, but the merciless shootings shocked Lake Worth authorities. All bets were off between Top Six and the 14th Boys, and blood was about to run in the streets. I think this was the last straw. Once this happens, we knew that everything was gonna break loose. West Palm Beach, Florida. Separated by the intercoastal waterway from its rich neighbors in Palm Beach, it's called the other side of the island. 